a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And the year it came to Zion died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, with the train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. They cried one to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among the people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See now, this has touched your lips. Your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for? Here I am, I said. Send me. The word of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praise, Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength in me. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praise, Lord. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praise, Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praise, Lord. Second reading, reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed receive, and which you also stand. Though if you are also being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in fame. For I handed on to you as my first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am where I am, and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them, not I, however, but the grace of God that is within me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believe. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. But at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come to help them. They came and filled their boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him, and all who were with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they were brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Our God is an amazing God. Amazing. And the reason why it's amazing is because of the people he chooses to do his work. What you are, you know, the little, last, least, lost, and dead. Uh, in other words, I God choose the sinners. I God choose the sinners to do his work. They can become saints. But they begin off as sinners, which should not depress you. It should give you a tremendous feeling of hope. Because who in this church is not a sinner? I mean, other than myself. But I mean, all right. All right. Uh, we're sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And yet, we would God got to work with. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is in our three readings, Isaiah, 1 Corinthians, and uh, from the Gospel of Luke. All three, if they submitted a resume to you, you wouldn't take them. You wouldn't take them if they wrote their resume out. Uh, Isaiah, the great prophet, one of the greatest prophets uh, in the uh, in the Bible. He says, "Woe, I am doomed. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm, I'm, I'm flawed." I'm scarred. I'm fallible. And 
Uh, he says, God says, you're going to have this coal that's going to touch your lips. And many of you would like to put more than a coal on my lips, but that's, that's something else. Uh, I don't know how many of us would want to preach if we had a cold put to our lips. I, I don't think there's enough, uh, what is it, chapsticks? Whatever it is. Uh, to kind of cover those things up. But the Lord says, you're going to get the cold and you're going to have clean lips. You're going to be purified. So that you can proclaim the word of the Lord to the people. That's what's going to happen. You're going to do that. And what happens at the end? What happens at the end? God says, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Who's going to go and proclaim it? And Isaiah says, Here I am. Send me. From the one of unclean lips, he says, Send me. I'll do it. I'll go and say the word. Our second read from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. If you remember in Acts of the Apostles, the first Catholic martyr, St. Stephen, first Catholic martyr, He was called Saul. He wasn't yet Paul. And they laid their cloaks at the feet of one named Saul. One named Saul. He was in charge of killing these Christians, imprisoning them, getting these people had to go. Uh, because Paul was a fervent, dedicated believer in the law of Moses. He was a Pharisee. He said, I'm a Jew of Jew and Hebrew of Hebrew. <coughs> and he had a whole bunch of Christians rounded up on the way to Damascus. And the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him. Lord Christ appeared and he said Saul why are you persecuting me? In other words to persecute the Christians the body of Christ is to persecute Christ himself and Saul became blind from the divine light but he became blind so that he could see. It sounds strange, but he became blind so that he could really see. Not with sight, but with insight. The insight of faith. And Paul was given the ability to go and bring the message of the gospel throughout the world. The known world at that time. Uh, and, uh, you know, he says that he is what he is. He's abnormally born. He appeared to me that I may preach. Nobody would have thought this of, uh, of Paul. And, he says that 
It was by grace, by grace. In other words, no merit of ours. What, what do we do to deserve it? Nothing. What do we do? Nothing. By grace, he is what he is. By amazing grace, in yeah, that wonderful song. Thank God we don't hear the singers. Uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, and now I'm found. Blind, and now I see. It is by amazing grace. We don't stand before God and say, hey, you owe me this. I, I deserve this. Hm. I don't want what I deserve. Uh, many of you have told me what I deserve, but uh, we won't go into that because we probably get some children in here. Uh, but it's amazing grace. And Paul says, it is by grace that I have been saved by God's grace. Uh, and he says, whether it be I or they, so we preached and you believed. The word goes on. Paul Saul to Paul gets raised up by amazing grace to go and be the apostle to the world. Strangely born, as he says. Who would have thought? God did. God did. <coughs> and lastly, I'm almost over, so hang with me. We have Simon refer to here once as Simon Peter, but Simon. And uh, Simon's a fisherman. I'm from Louisiana, New Orleans. Uh, I'm an old pelican with one wing going around the body that happens to be in the desert. Uh, figure that out for the last time. And uh, he's a fisherman. And he tells Jesus straight out. He said, uh, <coughs> we've worked all night. And that happens. That happens. And we have nothing. We have empty nets. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Jesus says, go out into the deep water. Ooh, deep water. Mm. You go out in the deep water of the Gulf, uh, you could have a problem in the deep water of the Gulf. But okay, you go out into the deep water. And he says, okay. Simon says, okay, all right, I'll, I'll do it. And they have a tremendous catch. It's an amazing catch. Beyond their expectation. And Simon says, depart from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Isaiah, Saul to Paul, and Simon to Peter. Depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful guy. And the Lord says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And I guess what I want to leave you with is this, if I may, please. Uh, if you think your nets are empty, do not. The Lord will fill them. You may have worked very hard and very long and very diligently at something or with someone, maybe your children 
I don't know, your parents, whatever. Your nuts or not in. Don't be afraid to go into the deep water. Because today, at some point, or this week, the Lord may ask of you to lower your nets. And you say, I don't have anything in the nets. And the water is deep. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Fear is the great enemy. And fear is one of Satan's greatest powers to make us afraid. Go into the deep waters. Go into the deep waters. You're not going alone. You not only have a life preserver, you have a savior preserver. Jesus Christ on the cross. Christ on the cross. You're not going alone. So, uh, we see that God takes people that we think, hmm, depart from me, Lord, I'm sinful. I'm on strangely born in the faith. Strange apostle, St. Paul. Isaiah. I'm a man of unclean lips. And God raised them up. God raised them up. So, regardless of your situation, and I have no idea what your situation is, you don't know mine and I don't know yours, we don't know each other. The important thing is, whatever you do, don't despair. Don't despair. Your nets may look empty right now. They may, I, I don't know, I have no idea. But, the Lord Jesus Christ will fill those nets if you go into the deep water. Whatever that is, go into the deep water. And above all, please, do not be afraid because you're not alone. The Lord Jesus Christ is with you and for you. And the Lord Jesus Christ will fill your nets. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand.